Hello and welcome to this special first look exploring session. Uh, the uh, session which is subtitled in my spreadsheet as Is This a Play? Uh, so today we are doing the opening of the unjust usurped primacy of the Bishop of Rome, uh, a text printed in 1549. It is rather long um, and it's one of these things that uh, to uh, to quote uh, Martin Wiggins. Um, uh, it has winked in and out of existence on previous lists and in successive editions of the annals as its classification as drama or non-drama is variously decided. Today we are going to put it to the test and uh, with this small room, because there aren't that many parts to actually read, we are going to ask that question, is this drama or is this just people saying words. Uh, to find out, uh, we've done this before uh, with our free uh, free will um, uh, video and uh, in which we proved that free will is not an illusion because everybody openly decided not to continue reading that. We will find out whether we will uh, read more of this after today's session. So reading Lucifer and at present I think Bishop Boniface is... Liza Graham. Hi. No. Oh, no, wait, hang on. <laughs> I don't know who I am. No, you're Beelzebub. <laughs> See? <laughs> so easy to get them confused. E Eric is uh, the father of lies. Excellent. And yes, the Lord so of uh, reading, we'll say that again. Reading Lucifer and Bishop Boniface is... Hi, I'm Eric. I'm the Lord of Hell. Uh, uh, later to be uh, elected Pope. Um, and uh, reading Beelzebub and uh, Dr. Sapience is... Liza Graham, Lord of the Flies, London. Uh, and I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I'm reading nothing unless their, their, their lungs give out and they need, a, they need to call for backup and we substitute. Because uh, there are basically no stage directions. There is just dialogue. Lots and lots of dialogue and lots of long speeches. So, um, uh, without further ado, we will uh, begin uh, what we're labelling as Scene 1, from now on, uh, which features Lucifer and Beelzebub, and Lucifer speaks first. My dear faithful brethren, and most entirely beloved friends, for as much as I know how much profit ariseth of the labour and pains that you take in the world, be ye well assured that I would not have willed you to assemble here together in hell at this present, were there not of some great profit to our commonwealth arising of the same that moved me to, so to do. You know right well, my brethren and friends, how wrongfully and unjustly our enemy God, without our own fault or deserving, hurled us out, down out of heaven headlong. And also, you know, what grievous torment, misery, and calamity we have sustained ever since that time. And although he will needs reign alone in heaven and can abide no fellow to be joined with him in that kingdom, but doth usurp it hold to himself alone, yet if he would have left to us some dominion in earth, this torment and misery of ours might better have been borne. But whereas we had much by, by much travail and business obtained and enjoyed, as it were, by our prescription, of many years the dominion of the world, see you not how he hath sent this same son of his, whom they call Christ, to mar all that ever we have made, and utterly to destroy that we have builded. Do ye not perceive how that fellow Christ, <laughs> being nailed upon the cross, draweth all men unto him, and do ye not perceive what a number of men which before were of our side be now fled to him, there to be soldiers underneath his banner? If his apostles, being but twelve, made such a commotion through the whole world, what a rustle think ye will so many thousands make whom they by their teaching have turned? Certainly, by conjecture, it should seem that the matter will daily wax worse and worse until this, unless this great mischief be wisely provided for in season. Else it, will it come at length, come to pass, that our scepter royal shall be plucked out of our hands and our dominion utterly taken away from us. But after long consulting and devising, there is now come into my head a very handsome imagination whereby we may destroy the kingdom of Christ and establish our kingdom forever. 
if we attempt to oppress the members of Christ with persecution and tyranny, we shall that way, but increase more and more our own sorrow. For as we be sufficiently taught by long experience, they be so possessed and led with the zeal to the glory of God and so carried with a vehement heavenly spirit that they contemn all things, saving Christ only. And this one thing seemeth much to be marvels at, that when they be spoiled for the glory of Christ or banished into exile or lose their honor, their country, their substance, yea, or their life also, that they earnestly triumph and be merry and esteem it as a game won and a joyful victory to suffer all kinds of misfortune for Christ's sake. So that the more sorrow we do with unto them, the more glorious and famous they be. And we remain in more misery and confusion. And again, there is one other thing both more hurtful to us than to be, and more to be lamented. That is, the rest of the people, perceiving them to bear such ignominy and rebukes with so marvelous patience, so joyful hearts, and so constant a courage to be compelled thus, to think thus with, with themselves and say, Truly God liveth and worketh in them marvelously if they had not an experience and taste by secret moving of the Holy Spirit or of another life in Christ, much happier and better than this present is, they would never be so desirous to be rid of this present life. And if it so be that we kill one Christian man, as the fable is of the cutting of one of the heads of hide with the serpent, there springeth, as it were, of the ashes of him a hundred immediately in his place. When we intend to bring the kingdom of Christ to nothing, then we make it more noble, rich, and glorious. Now, if we should attempt to overcome this, our ancient enemy's kingdom, by reasons and arguments, we shall do nothing else but increase our own rebuke and shame. No man can withstand their wisdom, wherewith our, if our reasons be compared, truly they be very foolishness. Therefore, it is expedient and necessary, seeing that we cannot overcome them in plain field with open war, to attempt their overthrow by art, policy, diligence, craft, subtlety, guile, and perdition. I have conceived in my head a deceit of such weight and importance that if I may bring it about after such sources I have devised it, there was never man saw, neither yet in the world was there any that devised the like both th for the strangeness and for the force thereof. I have devised with myself to make a certain new kingdom replenished with idolatry, superstition, ignorance, error, falsehood, deceit, compulsion, extortion, treason, contention, <laughs> discord, <laughs> tyranny, and cruelty, with spoiling, murder, ambition, filthiness, injuries, faction, sex, w wickedness, and mischief, in the which kingdom all kinds of abominations shall be committed. And notwithstanding that it shall, it shall be heaped up with all kinds of wickedness, yet shall the Christian men think that to be a spiritual kingdom, most holy and most godly. The supreme head of this kingdom shall be a man which is not only sinful and an abominable robber and thief, but he shall be sin and an abomination itself. And yet for all that shall he be thought of Christian men, a God in earth. And his members being most wicked shall be thought of men most holy. God set his son unto the world and who for the salvation of all mankind hath humbled himself to the death of the cross. And I will send my son unto the world who for the, the destruction and condemnation of mankind shall so announce himself that he shall take upon him be made equal with God. This is our counsel and witty invention, and this is not to be doubted, but that if the matter come to pass, as I would have it, as my trust is that it shall be, we shall in short space see a revenging of that our old injury. When I behold you, most redoubted prince, and ponder your words generally with myself, you would not believe how much I am comforted. Methinks that I am now so satisfied, and that I feel myself so presently eased as though I myself had poured out all the boiling poison of my stomach against God. There was never a creature that had a more witty, a more noble, or a more worthy device, if the matter might take like effect. As me seemeth, it cannot. 
For who could believe that the Christian men, which excel in wisdom and judgment, uh, could be brought to this point to believe that the kingdom of the devil is the kingdom of God, and that the supreme head of that kingdom, being the very great devil of hell, ought to be adored and worshipped for a god in earth, and his members honored for saints? Oh, how goodly occasions many times lose, and good, how goodly enterprises come not to such effect as they were purposed for by the means of the weak fearfulness of men's stomachs, in that they dare not take the thing in hand, which they be afraid they shall not achieve, such as be of hold. I courage advance their mind, uh, studying and attempting things of great adventure, and so with wit, industry, diligence, care, and earnest, earnestness, at the last they bring things to pass and it be very hard to come. My hope is, therefore, that even as God hath saved the world by Christ, so in spite of him, I shall destroy the same, and that under the pretense and color of the same Christ, by the means whereof men may be the easier deceived, I will stir up the chief captains of my kingdom, that they may so by craft and diligence shadow and cover superstition and idolatry with a fair face and beauty of feigned uh, holy ceremonies and good intent, as they call it, that men shall be made so drunken and so amazed with this outward pomp and show that they themselves can, shall not be able to discern truth from falsehood when they be drowned in the midst of the flood and I, of, it, of idolatry and superstition. Moreover, I have determined so to extol and set up the carnal man in this my kingdom and the light of nature and the strength of man's free will and his works, that I shall be able to cast down Christ out of his place and bury his great benefit, and so to diminish the profit of his grace, his righteousness, and merit everlasting. And furthermore, I will bring men into that madness that they shall think themselves not only able by their own power and might to enjoy the praise of the righteousness before God, but also that the election and choice of their salvation shall depend wholly upon themselves. All these things will I persuade to men under a pretense of a more perfect righteousness and honesty, under a shadow of a better setting forth the glory of the name of God. And although the principal heads of this kingdom shall be full of darkness, of ignorance, heresy, error, fraud, and lies, yet shall they shamelessly take upon them the usurpation of authority to make new and wicked articles of the faith, resting in the holy scriptures to their crooked purpose. And yet shall they think themselves to be in a great clearness of light and truth. For I can easily persuade unto them that their church is the church of Christ. For it, although it be nothing else indeed, but a very assembly of Satan, I will persuade unto them that they be the disciples of Christ and successors of St. Peter, when indeed we be their chief masters, and they are vicars and supply our ruins and serve our cures in earth. Finally, when indeed we reign in them, they shall think that they have the Holy Ghost within them, so that although they be in a continual error, yet shall, shall they persuade men that they are inspired with the heavenly spirit and cannot err. Oh, Lord, what a number of mischiefs and abominations shall be committed in this kingdom by reason of the wicked and sinful decrees which shall be made of governors of the same, when they shall glory that they have power to bind the conscience of men and even of like sort, as though, as though they were hail fellow with God, or rather, better. And all this under the shadow of religion and holiness, I will call them, cause them to be most cruel tyrants and butchers of Christ and his chosen members, and that under pretense of zeal to the house of God, they shall attempt to hide their uncleanliness under a gay name of full life and shall cover their wickedness and abomination with an exceeding wide cloak of hypocrisy and with a glorious shining title of religion and holiness. But what needeth so many words? The chief head of this kingdom shall be directly quite contrary to Christ, and the members of it shall be open adversaries to the chosen of God. But one thing, my friends, you must diligently consider that this thing of necessity be always kept secret. 
else if men should perceive by any means this our counsel, all our labors should be lost and all, all our enterprise frustrate. Doubt ye not, dear brethren, but that if this thing come to pass that I intend, there shall be such horrible and wicked viciousness in this kingdom that the, the captains themselves could not abide if they knew them to be so abominable as they shall be. Wherefore, it is necessary that the, the greater the wickedness shall be, the more craftily and cunningly they be announced and set forth with some pleasant, beautiful face of religion and gay painted veil of holiness. All these things we allow right well, and be also ready to obey your counsels, and to bestow all the powers of our wit and might to set forward this noble enterprise. How be it, first and foremost, we think it very expedient that ye disclose plainly unto us all your intent and purpose, that we may direct all our labors and study to that end, and so to bring this noble enterprise about even as we will, with the common consent of us all. Even as upon Christ dependeth the whole salvation of all mankind, so is it necessary for us to devise a supreme head upon whom may depend the whole condemnation of all mankind. And as the Son of God for salvation of the world did abase himself from the high state of his divinity and endued himself with man's nature, of a like sort is it needful for the destruction of the world that there be some man which shall announce himself above Christ and above God himself, that men, being blinded by stinking and filthy superstition, may fear, honor, and obey a mortal man more than the living Lord. And moreover, it is necessary that this man be so furnished with all wickedness and uh, iniquity that I may worthily say of him, this is my beloved son, in whom is my only delight. Hear him, even as the heavenly father long ago did testify of his son Christ. Methinketh that I hear the lively image of Antichrist himself handsomely and properly described of you. It is even so indeed as thou sayest. But who is, I pray you, so shameless to receive so wicked a dignity? Receive it, quoth he. This dignity shall be honored and set forth with so much riches, so much pleasure, and so much abundance of things so greatly befriended with noble men, so decked with honor and great wealth of this present life, that all the princes of the earth shall be desirous to gain thereunto, to attain thereunto. And as for the abominations of this high seat, they shall be so covered with a gay, glorious, outward show of holiness, that they themselves, which shall sit in the same, shall not be able to know their own wickedness. No. A man would scarcely believe it. They shall think themselves very gods in earth. As far as my wit will serve me, I think the Bishop of Rome the most meet instrument to bring about the thing we intend. Because this Rome is the head city of the world, it shall be no hard thing to persuade men that the Bishop thereof is the head of all Christian men and the Church of Rome to be mother of all other churches. And again, the insatiable ambition of the Romans, their craft and malice and guile, wherewith they be naturally infected, shall not be the only thing that shall help, so, that shall help forward our purpose. But also the, fervor, the favor and grace that they obtain at the emperor's hands of Rome. Furthermore, it is not unknown unto you that by reason of the manifold heresies which we have sown in Africa and in the east parts of the world, what a number of bishops have fled to Rome for succor of the emperor. The bishop of Rome, as a man that gapeth for this honor of the highest place, entertaineth all men very friendly, declaring tokens of kindness and love towards everybody, in so much as that some of a mere simplicity and some other by craft and fraud will be so desirous of the election and appointment of this high dignity that they will be very glad to give their voice to the Bishop of Rome, who on the other part is so replenished with deceit and subtlety and with such a bottomless desire to be a prince that it shall be easy for him with the help and behavior favor of our spirit to attain to this most high dignity. Namely, because as he know, they be sufficiently furnished already with learning and also help us by the power and working of our spirit. 
the churches of the East part of the world were easily affected with the heresies they were sowing abroad because, and because their heresies be now known to all men, they cannot infect the other churches of Christ, which be more sincerely instructed. But as for this church of Rome, it must be infected by little and little, not in the outward show, but in the inward bowels. And that's so extremely, it cannot be made more wicked. The outward pomp and show and certain form of the church of Christ being preserved, that by the means thereof, it may bring all other churches more easily into error. And maybe the only chief breeding mother of error and wickedness, like as it shall be taken for the mother of all other churches. Thus have I declared unto you, dear brethren and friends, all my whole invention and imagination, and I have opened also and set before your eyes and the end whereunto we must direct our labors and study. It resteth now with you that every one apply this whole, his whole mind to the uttermost of his power for the performance of so noble an enterprise and leave nothing undone that shall seem expedient for the bringing about thereof. Doubt ye not that this, the time is at hand uh, when we may revenge our old injury against God, and for as much as he would not suffer us, being most worthy creatures to be fellows with him in heaven, we will bring to pass by our industry that the vilest man and most cast away in the world shall be above him on earth. <laughs> And now that every one of you in his degree may be the more cheer cheerfully apply himself about this business, I promise you, you need not doubt, but you may be well assured that we shall in short space bring the thing to pass that we desire. For in this point that we have God himself favorable unto us, who in sundry places of scripture prophesies that there should an antichrist come, and now is the time expired wherein that wicked head of Christendom ought to come to the world. Then, if God will not be made a liar, it is necessary that at the last he come and be disclosed to the whole world. For with this whip, God will scourge and punish the false Christians, who, because they could not believe the truth, God of his rightful judgment will that they shall believe lies and be worthily deceived, as Paul hath written. There were never, nor never shall be, more shining ceremonies, nor more beautiful, whereby to, the, to allure men under a color of holiness, than those shall be with which Antichrist and his members shall devise to be used among men. And know ye moreover, for a confirmation of their doctrine and the, that they may be more easily deceived, God will suffer many wonders, many signs and miracles, be showed by us, by reason of whom even the very chosen shall be seduced, if it were possible, as Christ himself hath prophesied. I am sure ye have in remembrance how that in the beginning of the Church of Christ, when it was most pure and long season after, there were chosen as well in Rome for to be bishops such men as the most godly, best learned in God's holy scriptures, and as most diligently and faithfully labored to announce God's true word in his glory. But afterwards, when good discipline began to decay and when we had poured ambition, darnel, and dissension into the world, then they were, then ch were chosen to be bishops by their own procurement and not as such as were most godly, but such as were most worldly, ambitious and crafty seeking more their own glory and lucre than the, the announcement of God's glory and the exercise of their office, rather plucking from the sheep their milk rather than feeding them with good pastures. So that the name of a bishop now is no more the name of a painful office as, a time, as it was in times past, but of a great pomp and dignity. Furthermore, they have ordained, according to the example of the old patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, three new patriarchs, one of Antioch in Asia, another of Alexandria in Africa, and the third of Rome in Europe. Of a like sort, you know that a long season of all Christian men in the Church of Christ have been taken for spiritual, sanctified, and religious men, 
as they be called in the scripture, and as they are indeed, for as much as they be hallowed in baptism and dedicated to God to be his children and to be led by his spirit. But the infidels, which be not of the church of Christ, as men utterly without Christ be accounted, as they be indeed profane, heathen, and ungodly. But now the late days, only a sort of cloister is disguised men in apparel and living from other men begin to be taken for spiritual, religious, and holy men, though they be never so vicious. Will other Christian men, be they never so godly and replenished with their heavenly spirit, yet be they judged profane and unworthy to touch their garments with their little finger? This wonderful dignity and magnificence shall set out the royalty and glory of our monarchy, not a little. Believe me, dear brethren, we have a neat time and opportunity for our triumph, for our glory and victory. God, for the announcement and for the increase and the establishment of his church, gave it to the Holy Scripture for a rule to live by forever. Likewise, for the increase, the enlarging and confirmation of our church, we will give it unto it, we will give unto it our decrees and canons, which, although they be most part profane and wicked, yet shall they nevertheless not only seem good and holy, but also they be taken for the very squire and rule whereby the holy scripture shall be tried. Furthermore, because God knew right well that his holy word is a thing most necessary above all other, he commanded his apostles that they should preach throughout the world the voice of the gospel which indeed is the true chief office of them, which will be taken for the true ministers of Christ. For although baptism, as all men know, be a ceremony ordained of God, both holy and necessary, yet was the, the Apostle Paul so diligent and busied with preaching the word of God that he christened very few with his own hands, but left that office to other ministers. But now the time shall come. Yea, and it is at hand, wherein... The chief heads of this own king, this our kingdom, shall not only challenge to be the successors of the apostles, but also of Christ himself. They shall be stricken with such a madness that they shall think it a vile, shameful thing for them to be able to preach the gospel. And therefore shall they substitute under them simple who for the fashion's sake shall pretend and do the outward ceremony of preaching. But the doctrine wherewith they shall instruct the people shall be handled and effected after their own fashion. And as for the bishops, they shall be given altogether to esteem of things of the world and of the flesh. And yet, to the end that they may appear before men as though they were bishops indeed, at certain times of the year they shall set forth sundry ceremonies with a great show to the people, which shall be no less cold, dumb, and foolish and wicked than wicked and superstitious, which shall be framed and wrought in our workhouse of hell. But briefly to comprehend and <laughs> see of matter in few words, know ye, my brethren, that this kingdom of ours shall be so pestilent and abominable that it shall not only infect and hurt the church of God, the holy ceremonies and constitutions, true worshiping of God and the sacred scripture itself, but it shall also destroy and overthrow other liberal arts and sciences. When I consider how short the life of man is, it seemeth to me a thing impossible that one bishop of Rome in so short a space should bring to pass so many mischiefs. Brother, methinketh <laughs> he be very dull. <laughs> You're I'm this name you Randy. blue. <laughs> Brother, methinketh that you be very dull, for this name of Antichrist is not the proper name of any one man. It is a common name to any, to so many. For notwithstanding, it is a fit name for all of them that be contrary and enemies to Christ, yet chiefly and above all others, it agreeeth to those bishops of Rome which usurp tyranny, lordship, and dominion above all other bishops. Now, all the difficulty and hardship of this business standeth in the beginning thereof. That is to say, in giving a beginning to a matter of so great importance. 
And that same Bishop of Rome maybe found who dare to give the first adventure to be called the head of all other bishops. If we may once obtain this at one of their hands, the rest will follow easily. And daily will they find out new ways for the establishment of their dominion. Therefore, let us all now go out of hand. And every man prepare himself to do his endeavor according to his calling. I, as your chief captain, will first prove a foremost attempt to persuade this godly imagination of mine to Boniface, the Bishop of Rome. And I doubt not but that I shall obtain favor of his carnal wisdom. Muhahahaha. <laughs> End of first scene. Um, so uh, I think it's fair to say. Uh, Lucifer is master of the Columbo technique of just one more thing. Um, it, it literally does that every so often. Um, talking about, you know, we can't win, we can't win, uh, this war, uh, with, uh, you know, standard fighty tactics. This is going to be a guerrilla war. Um, we're going to have to be a bit, uh, uh, a bit clever. Uh, we'll create a rival church. Our church, it's going to be just like all the, the other church. It's going to have all the ceremonies. It's going to have all the stuff. It's going to, it's going to be fabulous. Uh, it's just going to, it's going to be just like the ordinary church, just evil. And, uh, yeah, uh, fake news, fake news people. It's just going to, uh, going to do all the stuff just, just in our evil way. Um, had a lot more life to it than I thought it was going to. Uh, I have to say, I was, I was, there, there's some nice characterization. There's some, the, the 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 Lucifer is is a real ass licker, isn't he? Um, when he's not just asking questions of you know, please tell us more, tell us more. Um, uh, but then every so often, uh, you know, Lucifer comes out with useful zingers like, uh, "But what need if so many words?" Um, <laughs> At the end of however many pages it is, yeah, yeah, it's like um, it's like he knows I'm just going. Well, sorry, I've I've been going on a bit long. Um, you know how it is. Um, so, yeah, um, but it is also very clearly. Uh, hi, we have a message about what we think of um, of this particular branch of the church. Um, thoughts in the room. How was uh, Eric? Uh, you survived that uh, many words. Uh, there's quite a lot of chunk. Well done. Um, any thoughts? I was amused by the whole yes we know the enemy this is totally like what their their operational system is therefore we shall do exactly the same thing but it shall not be the same thing mm. it felt like i mean so, you know it was he talks about a war and you know establishing the kingdom and stuff but to me it was more like the way i imagined it was more like this is a business meeting and he's trying to convince the stakeholders <laughs> Although technically he's in charge, so he doesn't need to convince anybody. But yeah, it's kind of. I, I also like the concept of like there's a democracy in hell, therefore they have to all do their own bit, or it's either that or communism. I mean. Yeah, I, 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 I think the, the, the it's 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 a quite a vertical power structure here. I, I, I think it's very much Lucifer. I mean, he, he may be pretending to be the best boss in the world, but you know, you've got to do the job. You know, go out. You've been given your assignment. Do it. Um, I'm sure there are targets. I'm sure hell's full of targets. Um, and 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 management speak. And yeah, actually, I would argue that management speak was probably invented in hell. Um, so actually, yeah, the idea that this is effectively a middle management meeting uh, going through. Um, I, yeah, I like the business, the idea that this is basically a, a, a takeover bid. Um, how do we how do we, uh, 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 you know, uh, beat the bigger company? Uh, well, basically by um, by copying everything they do and uh, hope that nobody notices. Uh, see if we can win over customers uh, on the idiot in a hurry principle. It, it's cunning. It's cunning stuff um, from Lucifer. Uh, Liza, any thoughts so far? Well, I do like Eric's uh, thought of this as a business meeting rather than an address to the troops. Even though only one devil replies uh, to Lucifer, he does refer to brethren. So mm. if we do think of this as a play, uh, we think of other mute devils on stage. Um, I have to say, at this point, I'm leaning towards thinking of it more 
as a text that the author possibly intended to be read out, uh, possibly to, um, you know, seminary kids, uh, uh, people studying for, I forget, is seminary a specifically Catholic thing? Or anyway, uh, people studying to become Protestant divines uh, who might secretly get a bang out of being devils and of saying that the Pope was the son of Satan. Um, but, uh, you know, the book is still open. I'm willing to be persuaded. Is, is, a, is a dialogue designed to be read aloud theater? Mm. Y- well, is uh, it? it- it, yeah, I mean that's 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 the question. I um, you know by the nature of the text because of its length, um, it's unlikely to be considered a theatrical performable text because it's it's incredibly long. Um, but then I'm sitting here going, well, could you trim a large chunk of this out and still make sense? I'm not sure because it's actually quite knottily. It's it's a very neat series of arguments actually. There are bits you could sort of skip to the end um, uh, and move on. But um, it's quite difficult to think of it as saying, well, maybe we could do an adaptation and and simplify and shorten it. And um, at the moment, uh, all that's coming into my mind is, you know, it would actually make... uh, It might work as an an audio thing um, because it's a bit like an audio book in that sense. It just happens to have some, some, some dialogue going back and forth. Of course, whether we'd want to actually release that or not is uh, is another matter. Because of course, doctrinally, it's um, it's you know in that general direction of a hate crime, so um, it's uh, a bit awkward. Uh, Eric, yeah, it's uh, if the reason it felt like a business meeting was because Lucifer keeps going, and now this is the point that I have made. This is the next point that I have made, and this is the final point that I have made. Oh, and uh, yes, don't forget about that. Uh, it just feels kind of very sort of you know um trying to com- you know brethren and friends but actually he's in charge but you know trying to convince people and stuff and uh, thank you for assembling for this council of head mm. I, 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 I don't know because it does feel it's it's it would be nice if you could break it out a bit and and, and have uh, individual presentations from separate demons. Uh, so we've been working on the whole presentation side of the church, and it's going to be a look. So I, I wonder whether actually there's the the as material that could be uh, re, re reworked that so there is potential there. I mean, it it it's say the the dial there is character to these 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 figures. You know, you do feel like you know them. Uh, you know, Lucifer uh, ha, has a certain Gravitas, Beelzebub is, um, I say, an arse licker, basically. Um, there to uh, ask the prearranged questions at the press conference. <laughs> okay, uh, Eric. Yeah, you can kind of imagine, that, like, sort of, you know, um, well, if it wasn't Lucifer, there would be sort of, um, what do you call it? Uh, if you broke it down into different parts and stuff, you could have, yeah, so this is the, the, the costume we will be wearing. And this is, you know, next season we will be ah, <laughs> modeling yes. this and so on and so forth. You could have Lucifer, yes, delegating to, you know, your creative team and your logistics team and your management. Exactly. Hell has many layers of management. And brand, of course. So, you know, brand marketing stuff. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Marketing, I mean, yes. you know, it's it's you know that's what it that's what the the name of the game is. You know, that's what it's all about. It's because uh, you know they don't have that many people on their side at the moment. They've got to they've got to build a, an army of followers who will spread the word, um, and 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 make 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 them into a force to be reckoned with. Right. So they've uh, they're uh, going to attempt to persuade the godly imagination of, uh, of uh, Boniface. So uh, let us see what happens if we look at scene two. Uh, uh, you'll be glad to know we're only looking at two scenes. Uh, and uh, yes, to get a sense of everything. Um, but uh, this is uh, Boniface the third and Doctor Sapiens, secretary to the emperor. So, Boniface, take it away. Uh, Sapius will enter a little later on. O immortal God, how sweet and pleasant a thing is the glory of the world. Truly, it is more to be esteemed than all worldly treasures of pleasure. I am the patriarch of Rome and have under my tuition and governance an infinite number of people. 
who, being pressed with any kind of affliction, straight they come running to me, as thick as hope as hops, and they are all honor me. They have their eyes set on me. I have money at will, and have many. I may have all kinds of pleasures in my command. Yet, if I could bring it to pass to obtain at the hands of Focas the emperor the dominion and principality of all bishops of the world, I would think myself to have attained even the very slightest of felicity and happy life that might be. If by then, if then I could not by wisdom and industry bring to pass that men should worship me as a god on earth, why I might be accounted as a fool and much unworthy of so great a felicity. But what shall I do? I can by no means disclose this, my fantasy, to any man, but I shall forthwith disclose this, mine arrogancy, and he shall judge me a man of ambition. But I see Master Sapiens, the Emperor's secretary, my old friend, truly, I could not have found a more fit instrument for my purpose. If he will be so good to me as to open this thing to the Emperor's majesty, not a thing devised but and found out of me, but rather of his own head. As though I might durst not hardy of my head, will, or so great a man. Uh, God save your highness, most reverend father. You'd be very heartily welcome. What news? Nothing but that all is naught. The sundry letters there be brought to the emperor's secretary, the contents of the which doth declare that there is such a number of factions, sects, contentions, and of diverse kinds of heresies in the Church of Christ, that without God's present help, the church will shortly be bitterly undone. Your words give me both occasion and encouragement to disclose unto you, as to my most faithful and dear friend, my whole mind and intent. I will therefore open unto you the secret and hide hid purposes of my mind. But because the matter is of great weight, first I will desire you to keep counsel. Sir, that is the thing that belongeth to mine office, to keep secrets. For as much as I am secretary to the Emperor's Majesty, a dignity whereunto I should never have attained, if I had not somewhat learned what thing it is amongst men privily or openly to whist or talk. Wherefore, be not afraid, say what you will, and think with yourself that ye may safely say your mind to me, for assurance whereof I promise you faithfully that I will open it to no man, nor speak anything thereof to any man living, but as you shall be contented. For one epistle and one message that the emperor hath received of factions and heresies, which abound in Af Asia and Africa, I have received a thousand letters and messages. For all good men resort to me as their own uh, refuge and succor, and I comfort them in their afflictions and calamities. There may there be many also, not all not all of the best sort, which resorts to my guard and tuition, some lest they should worthily be punished of their superiors for their offenses, and others that under the shadow of my favor they may be promoted to some dignity. And I of the very and of very humanity and gentleness cannot but entertain them very friendly and show them all kinds of all tokens of kindness unto them. Be they good or be they evil that come to me for refuge. It is not ambition that moveth me to this thing. Neither go I about this to means to increase my private commodity or to advance the worthiness of my dignity as God he knoweth. But Christian charity and a true zeal to God's honor moveth me to do this my duty. Unfortunate. Had the Christian men been, which dwelt in those countries, had I not holpen them with my labor and diligence, there is none among them who desired not the increase and in setting forth of mine honor, that my authority and help may be a stay under them, and in, in such things as belong to their profit. But I have a certain natural inclination, cannot tell, I cannot tell how, both naturally and willingly abhor all pomp and dignity. Uh, yet to say as I think, and as my conscience giveth me to speak the truth, I fear me much lest all churches, not only they of whom I spake even now, but our churches also in short space shall be undone, unless they be governed of some universal supreme head, 
uh, he know right well that there is where there is no order, there of necessity must be confusion. Neither can there be any certain order except there be a head where unto all things must be applied and as to the chief state of governance. And to put you out of doubt, Christian men be not now of that simplicity and virtuous behavior as they were in the beginning of the primitive church, wherefore now it is necessary for them to have a head which may punish the evil and reward the good. Ye see with your own eyes how many sects and heresies be now in the church of Christ, and there is small likelihood of amendment, but it shall daily be worse and worse. If some remedy be not found betimes, shortly shall ensue among such men such a licentious and unbridled liberty that every man will attempt to invent a new kind of religion of his own brain, so that every man shall believe what him listeth, and so refuse whatsoever shall seem contrary to his private commodity. Wherefore, it is very necessary that there be some supreme head to reduce all men to an unity in religion, whereby all waves of opinions may of a Christian sort be calmed and ceased. Experience, which deceiveth no man, but is the chief mistress in consultation, teacheth, teacheth this thing so evidently that it cannot be denied. Now that we have by sage conjecture espied it to be necessary to have one head in the church and Christian commonwealth, I judge that Christian men will more willingly and readily admit and receive me for their head and governor than any other man, which thing may be compassed more both more safely and better without business if the emperor would help it forward, being so profitable a thing as it is with his royal authority, against whose will and pleasure as I dare attempt nothing. So would I not doubt, but that if he would do this thing himself, it were no small means to increase the glory and establish the continuance of his memory forever, and also for the enlarging of his uh, imperial dominion and memory forever um, and dignity. For if I should acknowledge perpetual obedience, reverence, and fidelity to him as I am bound, and as my mind is to do, you might well think all the dominion and authority which I should have to pertain also to him. Now, if you think it good to commune with the emperor's majesty in this manner, in this matter, when ye shall see time and place convenient, because I know that he loveth you singularly well, and that he setteth much by your counsel, and I know how good ye be to persuade the matter, and also I am assured that ye be my very friend. I doubt not but ye shall easily bring to pass this my desire. And for my part, besides that I should always be bound unto you, I would declare unto you indeed, after no slender and mean sort, how earnestly I love you for I that I had received so great a benefit at your hands. And I will be plain with you. My desire is that ye will open all these things to the Emperor's Majesty as though they were first devised by you. And as though I had never talked or spoken of it, for it methinketh it a wisdom when I have obtained my suit to show myself as though it were against my will, uh, that I might say amongst all men that I take not this dignity willingly, but by force and compulsion. I perceive all that your highness hath in this plentiful oration declared. And I promise you my faith and true diligence for the compassing of this matter, and that my good heart and mind shall appear to your highness to be void of all dissimulation. As soon as I shall perceive what answer Caesar's majesty will make, I shall declare his will and pleasure to your most noble lordship. And because I am even now cloyed with so many businesses, uh, and am also sure that there be a great number looking for me at the court, I will take my leave of your highness. Uh, unless you will command me any other service? Uh, nothing, but that you will humbly commend me to Caesar, Her Majesty. I will, with all my heart. And exit Boniface, leaving Sapiens alone. <sighs> I thought the time of my tarriance with this man to be a whole year long. He displeased me so with such a rolling rhetorical vanity of words. Oh, Lord 
God, that there can be so much ambition and desire of honour hid in the breast of a man, and that of a Christian man, yea, and of a bishop which will be accounted most holy. Ha! It is no marvel that he entertained so friendly all strangers that came to Rome, and oftentimes praised them eager earnestly to the emperor, for it appeareth by the matter itself that it was for none other purpose but to obtain the favour of his neighbours and strangers, for the better attaining to this dignity which he hunteth for. And to cloak his hypocrisy with a gay outward show, he saith it is very necessary for the church to have one supreme universal head of the church in earth, as though Christ were not the true head of his church, or else did not regard things in earth, but sat in heaven, heaven idle and sleeping. He affirmeth also that if this head be not established in the church of Christ, it will sh shortly decay and be undone, but I am of a contrary judgment. If Caesar's majesty fulfill his ambitious desire, the church of Christ will not only decay, but it will utterly fall down as though it were plucked up by the roots, as though the bishops which be already were not sufficient for the churches that they have. And if there chance any contention to arise amongst them, they have counsels by whom to make an end of their strife and controversies. What knowledge can this false wretch have of the churches in Africa or the churches in Asia where he was never in all the days of his life? <laughs> But what talk I of Africa and Asia? How can he govern those churches which be in Europe? For whose language, for the most part, he understandeth not by the reason of the great distance of places and variety of the nations and men. Whoever saw one crane guide all the other cranes in the world? Whoever saw a shepherd which could alone feed all the sheep in the world? He were worthy praise if he could govern his own well, though he were not a whit troubled with caring for the rest. Who knows whether who knoweth whether wolves may be found in his own flock, and whether he may worthily be judged the chief wolf of all? It is not many years agone since John, Bishop of Constantinople, attempted the same enterprise that he might be made the universal bishop, whom the whole church did withstand, and namely Gregory the First, this man's predecessor who in his letters, amongst other things, wrote unto him that the name of a universal bishop was a foolish, wicked, proud, and a church-robbing name. And if he should go about to usurp that name, he should do nothing else but make himself like to Lucifer and be a foremessenger of Antichrist in taking away the glory and dignity from other bishops his brethren. And so to trouble the concord and unity of the faithful and undo the Church of Christ. Now... If this ambitious fellow may, may by craft and subtlety obtain that thing which his predecessors of, with the common praise and consent of all men did most justly condemn in other, surely it shall not be done without great offence of all good men. This dare I be bold to say, that neither Africa nor Greece, neither the rest of the churches of the East, will ever consent hereunto but will rather resist and rebel amongst themselves, and so shall the seamless coat of Christ be torn in many parts. This shall be the first fruit which shall spring of this devilish state of authority. Furthermore, the churches either will not consent thereunto, or else if they do consent, it shall be by compulsion, because they may easily perceive how much mischief this marvellous tyranny shall bring with it. If all the tyrants which ever have been were joined together, they all never did so much mischief to the world as this one is like to do. I see plainly that this matter is a thing most pernicious and hurtful, whereof I ought neither to think nor speak, but only to put away so great a mischief from Christian men's necks. Yet, because I have made promise, I will see what the emperor will say to it, we will talk earnestly with him of the matter, Forasmuch as this ambitious bragger did declare plainly that he would see me well rewarded if I would do that which lay in me to help the matter forward. Besides this, because he is named to be our countryman, one of the Romans, I am bound to promote his suit and purpose. And who knoweth what he will do shortly after, for my sake, if he obtain this dignity by my procurement? Truly it is not like that he will forget so great a benefit received at my hand. Nay, the more they strive amongst themselves, the more they shall need the emperor's help, with whom I am chief, 
so my vantage shall be the fatter. Therefore, I will bring this thing about, that with as much celerity and speed as possible. And we'll just pause there. Um, that was cooking with a, a, a bit more gas as, uh, you know, worldly characters are making an offer, you know. Hi, uh, look, uh, I'm thinking of uh, consolidating the power structure of the church uh, with, uh, oddly enough, there's this position at the top of this pyramid uh, that I'm thinking of. Well, there's no one else. It's going to have to be me. Um, just think of all the opportunities your emperor would, uh, would gain uh, with me. Uh, if he supported this action, and of course, obviously, you can make it your your own idea as well. Um, there's 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 a lot of quite good stuff in there, actually. Um, uh, again, quite speechy, but um, some good speechy stuff. Um, and Boniface sort of just going, you know, being pulled into the the evil evil uh, ideas here. Um, and Sapiens, not keen, not keen, um, has to be said. Um, not keen on this whole idea at all, but he's going to pretend to be. He's going to pretend to be keen. Thoughts? Uh, Eric. I did like the whole sort of, I have tarried with this man for 10 years, I can't stand him anymore, or, or you know, whatever, however long it was. It just felt like 10 years. Um, yeah, it just, I like how it's like, yes, yes, of course, yes. Mm. Yeah, you can kind of, and it's like, I, I did enjoy the sort of moment of Boniface going, there will, it, it seems we need um, wise and good looking leadership. I wonder who that may be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's just, it's. It, I mean, it's just such a coincidence that, you know, the person we need happens to be me. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know what. What can be done about this situation? I mean, it's awkward, but, um, you know, what are you going to do? I couldn't possibly accept it. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. He's, he, yeah, he's every single politician ever, isn't he? Um, I scorned to take a bribe. <laughs> Sorry, this is the second time I've, I've mentioned this this quote uh, from Alphonsus today. But it, it is a good quote. Mm, it is, it is, uh, of the Emperor of, uh, of Germany. Uh, one, one should mention uh, as, uh, to disambiguate the, the other Alphonsuses that are available. Uh, Liza, any thoughts about that little exchange before we conclude the uh, the session with uh, the remaining back and forth with Boniface and Sapiens? Well, I think Sapiens is a really interesting character in that he's, he's very much Sir Humphrey here, I think. Mm. In that he... He does what's his job in that he gets Boniface to confide in him. Um, and Boniface has asked him to report it to the emperor, but I think Sapiens would report it anyway, mm. given that he works for the emperor. So, you, so even if he promises to keep confidence, you have to accept the emperor from that. The emperor, by the way, uh, is, is the emperor in Constantinople. Uh, at this era, it is emperor focus, focus with a PH not like a camera device, like an, an emperor. He was not a nice man. Um, but, uh, but it's historically accurate in that Boniface did have his ear. Um, not in a box or anything, it's just... Uh, he... Which is really interesting because the Patriarch of Constantinople, where Focus was, uh, wanted at the same time to be head of the church. Uh, but no, uh, the 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 emperor in Constantinople doesn't favor his own patriarch. He favors the pope, the bishop of Rome. So uh, that's you know an interesting nugget. Mm. Uh, yes, and so uh, yes, this this emperor focus, uh, and he's also called Caesar. Uh, so that's the, the, all of those various uh, variations are the same person. Yes, uh, we, we think of this empire nowadays as the Byzantine Empire, but at the time they called themselves Romans and thought of themselves as Romans. Mm. Um, yeah, they would have been Roman Catholic, uh, which is why when the Ottoman Empire, you know, you, when you got the divide, you know, Holy Roman Empire so on and so forth, it, much later uh, it gets problematic. Yeah, the Holy Roman Empire is about at the turn of the millennium. That's when Charlemagne gets, gets crowned. Uh, whether Byzantine, uh, wh whether the Church of Constantinople 
is the same as the Roman Catholic Church has been the subject of church argument for literally centuries. Um, there's we're not going to have any answers here. By they're the way, they're playing whack a heretical mole at the moment, and and there are many moles to be whacked. Uh, so um, if even the Council of Nicaea couldn't solve that one, I guess yeah. we probably can't. Yeah, I was going to uh, say that if it, it, it's going back to the the, the the all the way that all the way back, it's uh, it's not going to get any answer anytime soon. Yes. Uh, so that's who, what they mean when they're talking about the emperor. They don't mean someone in Rome. They mean they mean the guy in Constantinople. Um, so Sapiens' speech is really interesting because it, he starts out being like. Oh my God! This man is boring, and he's annoying, and he's not a good man, and also, and his ambition is is terrible, and what he wants is going to actively be bad for the church, and is actively going to be unChristian. However, it will be good for me personally, mm. and it will make the emperor more powerful and the church less powerful. Which it's arguable whether the papacy actually did that. Um, the the papacy very much, I think, in the minds of, of Roman, of, of Italian Romans, um, replaced uh, the, what, what the emperor had been in Rome, certainly adopted a lot of the trappings of, of imperial things, the wearing of purple and other, other um, signs of primacy. So um, this starts that. So uh, yeah, sapiens, it means wisdom. He sees clearly what's going to happen, but unfortunately, wisdom is not enough to deter the guy from playing real politique and doing what will make his emperor and himself, uh, as he believes, more powerful. Mm. Let us um, continue uh, with the text. Uh, we've had the exit of uh, Sapiens, uh, and Boniface returns to. Uh, do some chattage um, to himself, and then Sapiens will come on and chat um, to him. Uh, in, although, uh, you know, are people really talking to each other? We'll discuss at the end. Uh, anyway, uh, Boniface, take it away. Since I disclosed my mind to Dr. Sapiens, I've been wonderfully troubled. And who knoweth whether he will be? It's so wait a matter is this, keep counsel or not according to his promise. He hath a number of friends whom he will put in trust with some of my matters. And what if he opens somewhat of my will declaring the matter to the emperor? But be it that he do none of these things, yet can it not be that, but that Caesar's majesty of himself, as he is replenished with wisdom and exceedingly practiced in such kind of feats, shall by and by suspect that this arrow came out of my quiver and that the matter altogether was of my devising and so my craft shall be espied and I put to shame. Furthermore, it, if it so chance that he obtained not my suit at the emperor's hand, what shall I have, what, what have I then else done but disclosed unto him my bottomless ambition to no purpose? Uh, but if he obtain as... I pray to God he may. All men will say with one accord that I have brought it to pass with much labor and industry. And so the thing shall be left in writing to the posterity. And so shall I be to both men of this present age and to them we shall be in time to come, a laughing stock and a jesting stool. All men, good and evil, will have their eyes set upon me and as it were, point me out with their finger, I shall be hampered in a thousand snares. And one thing great is greatest mischief of all. I alone shall be the first beginner and the chief original of all abominations which my successor, successors shall commit in the whole world by the reason of this tyranny. But why trouble myself by myself any longer with a rabblement of reasons? The die is cast, happen what happen will, and I cannot, setting mine honor, draw back again from my purpose. Therefore, methinketh it more meet to stand to the matter stoutly, tarrying to see the end. If 
the matter come to pass as I would have it, as I trust it will, I will find a means quickly to see how I may find friends pleasantly. I the matter of itself telleth, and daily experience showeth that all men hunt for the friendship of them who excel in riches and authority, although they be very tyrants, and to the extent to the intent that them men shall the more embrace and magnify me, thinking me to be a Christ on earth, I will cause it by letters to be blown abroad all over the world that this high dignity chance to me, both not looking for it and altogether unwilling to receive it. And that I would have received it in no wise had not the zeal that I have to the house of God compelled me. That is to say, to provide a remedy for heresies, factions, and an infinite number of other mischiefs by which the, the church of Christ the oppressed. But Master Sapiens has come, and his journey towards me is with speed. He seemeth very merry. No doubt he bringeth me some good news. Your most reverend highness should not marvel that I have deferred and prolonged the time for answer to the matter which I know to be to us both very pleasant, longer than either of us both did suppose. Truly, the cause why I did was no negligence, but rather that I might bring the thing to pass more diligently and more effectuously. I chose my time and place when I might best for our profit declare this matter to the emperor. Yesternight, after supper, methought his majesty was merrier than he was wont to be. Uh, he walked forth into a garden, and being there alone, he called me to him apart. There he began to declare unto me his power, his riches, and to extol and magnify the greatness of his empire and dignity. And further, he opened unto me certain secret counsels, whereby he thought to increase his riches, and to cause his whole dignity royal to be the more esteemed. I, preserving this thing to make somewhat for our purpose, did not only confirm and, in, and approve his intent, but also added this thing moreover, that he now had such occasion and opportunity given him to increase his honor as never other emperor had before him, so that he would speak but one word. Now, because these words pleased him wonderfully, he desired me earnestly to declare unto him how and by what means this thing might be brought to pass. Then said I, if your imperial majesty would attempt to subdue the dominions of other princes, you may not think that it would be brought to pass without much bloodshed, without great danger and difficulty, but you now have an occasion offered unto you of God, which, if it will please you to take when it is offered, you shall not only without difficulty, but also with much ease and favor of all parties, subdue all Christian regions so that those people which be farthest off shall come and submit themselves to your majesty gladly and willingly. When I perceived that he gave very good heed to my talk whilst I should open this hid mystery first, I declared unto him how the church of Christ was shaken and tossed with sundry miseries and calamities, and for none other cause but that it lacked one supreme spiritual and universal head in earth whereunto all men that were afflicted with any kind of misery might resort as to a common refuge, and that all men both knew and desired this thing. I declared also how this head, for the opinion's sake of religion, whereto all men be naturally inclined, should easily be received of all the whole world. And moreover, by reason of the thunderbolts of excommunication, it should be terrible to all nations, so that in short space it should enjoy a firm and a perfect dominion. Besides this, I showed him that if one of the emperor's subjects should be chosen to be this supreme head, which should hang altogether upon the emperor's will and pleasure, he should be a very neat instrument easily to compass the dominion of the whole world. Thus I came nearer by little and little to the communication of your most reverend highness. I did put him in remembrance how much you favoured his majesty, how meet a man above all others geese seemed for this purpose. And again, for the great estimation in that ye were bishop of Rome, in the which Rome ye did now service with high praise and commendation, and also how much this thing was desired of very many men, which should increase the renown of the emperor's majesty with a great rejoicing of all nations. 
Uh, this thing also, I added, unless his majesty would declare and establish this head by his authority, it would shortly come to pass that some others would attempt the same thing and bring it to pass, he not knowing thereof. Yea, though he did gainsay it, who to his majesty's great shame and rebuke would choose some other, who was no subject to his highness, but so it might chance his adversary and foe, that either would spoil utterly or at the very least much vex the borders of the Roman Empire. In conclusion, these and such like reasons prevailed so much with him that, being persuaded, he interrupted me of my tale, and spake to me before I had made an end of showing my mind, praying and beseeching me that I would go busily about this manner, and that I should come straightway to your highness in his name. And so in his name, pray you very earnestly that you would not refuse this condition thus offered, neither disdain to receive this burden, whatsoever it be. And this is true also, I may tell your highness in council, the emperor charged me privily that I should not tell you that he desired this thing so much for the private commodity which might therefore thereby to him ensue, but for the glory of God and the prophet of the church. Thus your highness hath the beginning, the midst, and the end of my message. My dear friend, Sir Sapiens, notwithstanding that the last day I communed with you somewhat hourly of this matter, yet after that I had weighed more substantially with myself, I perceived it to be a dangerous enterprise and full of peril, and so hard to compass and so painful that I have repented me more than a thousand times since I ever began it. So that if I could have conveniently um, brought it to pass in time, I would have changed my former purpose and have desired you never to open your mouth, neither to the emperor, neither to any man else, for this or such like matter. This, I'm sure, is very true, that there was some heavenly spirit that moved me as soon as I first spake of, of this matter. But now I am in such, such a perplexity and doubt that I wot not what is best to do. For this is one, for, for this is one, I have loved quietness and my desire to pass over the rest of my life in rest and peace without ruffling in business. And on the other again, there is a certain zeal to the honor and glory of God which stirreth and pricketh me, neither would I willingly resist the calling of the Holy Ghost. Then cometh in the authority of the emperor's majesty, whose back word and request I take as a commandment unto me. Therefore, tell the emperor now how that when I thought nothing less than this thing, he, he laid glory of the name of God to my charge. And at the last, when ye had proved the thing to me exceed, by exceeding strong reasons, that I would not refuse this heavenly vocation being freely offered unto me without a manifest and open injury to God's holy name, and therefore that I was compelled to receive this offer. Yeah, but of this one thing, I desire you to move Caesar's majesty very earnestly, and ye shall move it to him in my name. That is, and he will consider again and again, when I am advanced up unto this high estimation, that I shall have many earnest adversaries who, whose darts he himself must defend and also guard and preserve me in that place wherein I am by him placed. And I think it is in very deed more wisdom and more standing with both of our honors and that even at the very first beginning, neither he should corrupt, neither I usurp his, this supreme authority for the avoiding of all tumult as I may be. It is enough that at the first I shall be proclaimed chief bishop of all. And uh, afterwards, this time and occasion serve, I shall, we shall go farther and uh, go uh, farther a little and a little, using dominion and authority for such a dignity. Therefore, let him speedily cause the writings to be penned and proclamation to be made throughout the world of this his determined mind and pleasure. Shortly after will I come humbly to see him, and therefore, and furthermore, I will have in remembrance how much I am bound to you, and what I have promised you when time shall require. All this shall be done, and fare you well. And exit Boniface. 
Even as of late our bishop disclosed unto me his wonderful ambitions, so now I perceive that he hath hid within him such an hypocrisy as never was heard of. I know that he runneth mad for this dignity, and yet went he about with his crafty, glozing, and deceitful words to persuade that he would never receive it when it was offered. Now, seeing that he goeth about to hide it from me, unto whom he first opened it, how will he handle others that know not his deceitfulness? Surely his shameless ambition deserveth no less but that I should let all the matter quail, which thing would be very acceptable to God, no doubt. But we have waded further herein than is easy for us to stop it, being almost brought to pass already. The emperor himself is so amazed and drunken with my words that by no means possibly can I withdraw him from his purpose. And I myself, who was the beginner and procurer of this matter, am forced not to forsake my suit, but rather with my judgment to allow it and with my diligence to perform it. What shall a man do? Such chance doth chance to them that attempt naughty matters. I will get me hence. The sooner I bring this thing to pass, the sooner I shall be delivered of these naughty and painful fantasies. And exit sapience. And uh, that's uh, the, uh, the, the, as far as we're going to get this session, um, with the text. Um, but there's, every so often it really leaps out at you. I mean, through, through all the wading of so many words, these little things, what shall a man do? Um, and, and there's other other nice little things. So I mean, the, the the you know it's it's not like free will where we did completely lose the will to live because um, it wasn't desperately well written and it was just people talking at each other. There is a there there are there are negotiations going on between these these people. There are there's spin. There is character. Uh, I I can sort of understand why this flits in and out. Of, of estimations of is this drama uh, regardless of whether it's a practical performing text um, is is it uh, engaging with being semi-dramatic and I, uh, uh, it, uh, it does seem to be doing that um, it's uh, it's just yeah a lot of words uh, with by the way we're 14 and a half percent into the text so uh, just so you know um, but what sh what shall a man do? What shall a man do? Uh, thoughts in the room about that little exchange? I, th I think there's some there's some the nice stuff. I, I like the, the the reported speech that we got from Sapiens. You know, I, I went I went to the emperor and he said this. Oh, I said this, and he, he 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 was quite keen and he he stopped me from talking. I quite liked that bit. That that the, there's nice little details in here that I'm I'm liking. Thoughts. Well, I really like Sapiens as a character. He, I, I mean, obviously, in Christian terms, since he knows it's, knows it's wrong and is doing it anyway, he's probably going straight to hell along with everyone else. But, uh, and I suppose rhetorically, he's there to present the moral viewpoint, even if he doesn't then enact it. Uh, but between those two things, between his purpose, uh, in, more morally and dramatically, we get the sense of a man choking on his own leash. We, uh, we definitely get, um, you know, Sir Humphrey, except a bit Faustus. Yeah. Um, now that play would be really interesting. Yeah. Anyway, um, so. Yeah, I, I really, you know, in a in a play full of characters who are like, I'm very evil and I'm going to do this. Uh, Sapiens is a shade of gray, um, and that really intrigues me. Like, in our debate whether is this a play, one of the questions has to be, are are the characters characters? Um, and I think Sapiens is. Um, is Boniface over to you, Eric? Mm, yes. I'm are not are sure. you a character? Are you a character, Eric? Are you real? Are you a real person? I'm a real boy. Oh, wait, uh, I. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I could not resist. 
um yeah i don't know about boniface because like at the beginning he's like yes i will conquer i will do this i will do that and like he sort of halfway changes his mind and then he goes back to it i'm not, i'm i wasn't very clear about that hmm i i yeah. I, I, I think there's vacillation there's definitely he's he's torn um that you know Satan's I, whispering in his ear. And... I don't know whether he doubts, whether, whether it's doubt that his intentions are morally right or whether it's just awareness of the risks of what mm. he's about yeah. to try and go for. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's more like sort of if you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar, what do you say? Um, no more cookies ever. Mm. But yeah, he seems to have motivation. He seems to have a uh, uh, thing, and, and and similarly, Lucifer and uh, and uh, and Beelzebub had 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 character. Um, and I, I did. I was actively thinking as we were going on, going, okay, could we trim this back? Could we could we do an adaptation of this that is 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 performable that isn't unbelievably long? Um, and yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, you'd have to throw a lot of bath out, uh, and, and, and maybe a little bit of baby, but um, maybe, maybe. Not saying I will. I'm not saying you know because life is quite short, and this play is quite long. Um, but I'm I'm increasingly uncomfortable using the word play. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It is a it is a three pipe problem, Liza. I might stop short of play and use the word drama hmm. if we got a scene with more than two people it would feel more like a play yeah a di dialogue meaning originally two right indeed indeed um but so. but i i agree with you that boniface has a personality more of a personality than i thought he would have hmm. yeah I know. well i think everybody's got more personality than i thought they had i really wasn't expecting it i really wasn't i was expecting this to be a painful painful slog um and uh, was pleasantly surprised i mean it was long that's because it... you weren't reading <laughs> <laughs> i would have been quite happy if you wanted to, to you, know. Yeah, okay. uh, you know i it was fun though yeah i like uh when boniface is uh, alone again a soliloquy uh mm. first yeah i mean not not the first soliloquy of the play but boniface and sapiens each get to talk to the audience on their own mm. um and boniface saying uh if he, if he fails he's saying and so shall i be both to men of this present age and to them which will be in time to come a laughing stock and a jesting stool all men good and evil will have their eyes set upon me and as it were point me out with their finger which that's very lively language so i i liked it a lot yeah and and, and yeah it's um it seems a very real fear that he has um yeah but why uh, trouble myself any? Why trouble I myself any longer with a rabblement of reasons? Sorry, Eric, you had your hand up. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that rabblement of reasons is one of my favourite lines. I have to say that there's every so often there there are some zingers in here. Actually, some really nice lines that I really like. Sorry, Eric. I was just fond of when I was reading Lucifer. There was this one section that made me think of free will and why we stopped reading that because <laughs> th there was this part that went like sort of. Um, and you know, before I, I will convince men, I will bring men into that madness. That they shall think themselves not only able by their own power and might to enjoy the praise of righteousness before God, but also that the election and choice of their salvation shall depend wholly upon themselves. It just made me think, yeah, there's no free will, it's an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the fundamental difference between this and free will was uh, we, when we did free will, and again, we only did the opening act um, of a 70,000 words text. Um, this is shorter, slightly. Um, was we did basically, we pulled the ripcord frequently of just going, OK, let's just sort of paraphrase. There's some stuff here. There's some stuff here. And the whole thing sort of degenerated quite quickly into I don't care. Um, whereas I do kind of care. I do kind of care. This is you no know, free will at all. What happens um, next? <laughs> I, I, you know, at my own risk, I will say I want to know what happens next. Well, okay, that is that is the question. That is a question not only for you and uh, and Liza and for myself as to 
whether we you know when we've got some quiet nights uh when we don't have many readers available we continue with this uh also the question for the audience would you like more uh and this is very much one of those uh those questions for those who are patrons because uh, frankly if you want more this is the kind of thing we really would like you to pay for um <laughs> because <laughs> This this is uh, one of those texts which doesn't offer quite as many rewards for us as as readers and uh, and uh, analysts. Yes, uh, as, we, as, we are as, venal as, as, and corrupt. Give us the filthy lucre. Give, <laughs> give us it to give us. us an incentive. Give us an incentive <laughs> to uh, to carry on. Um, so if you're interested in uh, in in hearing more, put something in the comments. Uh, contact us on the Patreon feed. Uh, give us some money. Um, and we we will we will continue reading the unjust usurped primacy of the Bishop of Rome. Um, no promises we will continue further, but uh, we may in the foreseeable uh, creep our way through it. Um, but uh, then again, other dialogues, uh, shorter dialogues, uh, may uh, distract us uh, as well as plays and all the other stuff that we do, because uh, we do an awful lot of material and um, we try to do everything, but sometimes everything is not appropriate but uh, in this case it's um yeah we're, we're sitting on the fence a bit but it's um there's a lot of stuff there a lot of good stuff there okay any additional final thoughts from everyone before i close the session no everybody's good okay well all that remains is to thank liza and eric for their wonderful reading uh so many words thank you very much everyone and goodbye such a rolling rhetorical vanity of words